Uh, welcome back to the channel, hope everybody's doing well. And in today's video, we are going to take a look at the MIC5 tester from Sonal. Now, for my work on electrical systems over the years, I have utilized a continuity and voltage tester, an example of which is like this one here from QTEC, uh, another one here that I currently use from Fluke, and I combine that with an insulation tester something like this unit from MEGA, the MIT 420-2. Now, what Sonal have done with the MIC5 is attempted to amalgamate the functionality of an insulation tester with a voltage continuity tester. Uh, the unit isn't that cheap. Uh, I paid £356 for this. Part of that will be Sonal. Sonal is usually quite expensive test apparatus. Um, they also are not overly widely available in the UK so you're not likely to find deals as there aren't that many companies that do sell the unit. Uh, for your money you get the tester itself, uh, you get an instruction manual, a multilingual instruction manual and that's got all of the information and operation within it along with the technical specs. Um, we have 0 to 600 volts measurement AC or DC up to 200 Hertz. Uh, you have continuity resistance measurement up to 2 kilo ohms or uh, 0.1 ohms to 2 kilo ohms I should say. And then we have an insulation test functionality 250 volt range up to 1 giga ohm and 500 volt range up to 2 giga ohms. Um, just have all the instructions with it. Having said that, the unit is fairly intuitive to use. Uh, you do get uh, an errata for the manual as well, slight amendment for some of the wording in there, and then you get a sticker of declaration for verification, but you don't get an actual um, calibration sheet with it. Uh, it's just stating that tests have been carried out. Uh, manufacturing date looks to be August 2022 for this one. And then you get a UK CA declaration certificate there and just some uh, sales literature or for a survey. Um, as well as that you get this little bag of adapters and bits for the tester. You get these 4mm probe tip adapters, four of them, and then you get some little insulation covers there for the probe tips to make this cap 4 compliant um, and all of that comes in this little cardboard box here. Uh, you can buy these as extras as well should you lose these and Sonal also make a case for this however I couldn't find the case or these available directly within the UK they would have to be ordered. So looking at the tester itself um, very similar styling to these other units that I have. Uh, same two probe with a little tip protector at the top here. Um, you take that off and then you see the two probe tips there. The four millimeter adapters they screw on as they do with all of the testers that I have. Uh, and then you have a stronger tip. These also make it four millimeter compatible, but it is a bit of a squeeze. Um, this is a Sonal uh, crocodile clip and it will not really go on. Uh, very very tight so I wouldn't want to force that on really. And, um, the other ones, let's have a look, this is uh, a couple of generic ones here um, and they do go on a little bit easier so you could use that with it if you wanted to. Uh, crocodile clip one of the probes and then this is another generic one um, which does go a little bit tighter um, so you can shop around and get crocodile clips that will go onto these should you want to. Um, this like little generic standard ones here very loose they don't seem to work at all um, so that doesn't work. Uh, we should take him off. The other crocodile clips that do work uh, this is a, a threaded one from Bryman. It doesn't actually thread on, but it does go on and does seem to make electrical contact uh, fairly well. And then 
my good old trusty RS Pro uh, Crocodile Clips clip on onesies, clip on to probe tips, and they goes on no problem. So you could use that bit ugly at the end there, I guess, but it is usable should you want to. Um, and obviously then afterwards you get the insulation tips that these just push on and go on there. They're not threaded on. The ones from Fluke do physically clip on. Uh, the ones for Q-Tech are uh, screw on ones. Uh, you can see they don't come off, they have to be unscrewed uh, to be removed. So in terms of access to terminals, the uh, sonal here without the tip protector on, 2.5, 4mm, 6mm, no problems. With the tip protector installed, that will go 6mm and go 4mm, it does go in. Uh, 2.5, it just doesn't want to know. Uh, what I have also found is if you get tight little spaces like up against the terminals here, um, it will go in, you can access it, but then when you try and remove it, you can sometimes leave the little tip protector behind. Um, so that's the disadvantage with not having ones that screw on, uh, like the Q-Tech here in comparison. This will go into a 2.5, 4mm, 6mm, and obviously with them, they don't pull off with them being screwed on, so uh, that's the kind of better solution, um, the Sonal solution there. So the shrouds and the 4mm adapters, they can be stored in this tip protector in a very similar manner to the fluke and then when your meter isn't in use you can put the two probe tips in there like that and it protects the whole of the tip um, that's only really works when you haven't got the tips protectors on or the adapters if I put these on to probes and then I try to use the same holes you can see that it doesn't really fit on if I uh, does line up so you could utilize it in that manner however when you come to remove the cover to use the meter I should have taken both of them off this time um, but yeah so that element doesn't really seem to have been thought out too well uh, to be honest with you um, as opposed to against the fluke one the tip adapters are stored in there and the covers are stored in the other two slots, so separate slots, but this will go on and off and store no matter uh, what you've got fitted to the probes and you can actually remove these, if you can do it, use the cover to remove that and then they're stored away inside there. And then you can clip it on when you hear it latch on. Um, so yeah, this lacks a bit of thought, uh, this uh, cover does. As per the fluke, it does have the earth pin adapter molded onto it, so you can push this into a UK based socket and it will move the shutters and then the meeting and stay clipped together and you can put them in and measure the mains should you need to do so. Uh, you do have to kind of hold this in, it springs out if you don't. So fundamental difference between this unit and the other units that I have uh, these voltage detectors, they are on all the time, so as soon as you touch the probes together you get a continuity reading there uh, to measure the voltage. You use the proving unit here, put it on, you get the voltage there straight away. Uh, none of that happens with this unit, you have to turn this unit on first. Uh, that's with the button at the bottom here. Uh, one press turns it on, you get the battery level and then it defaults then to the setting that it was on when it was last switched off. So there's only the three settings anyway. Uh, we've defaulted to the insulation test function there, 250 volts you saw turn up. Um, so in insulation test function it will measure voltage but it won't do continuity so uh, there's nothing there for the continuity on this. You'd have to switch to the continuity mode which you would do by pressing the select button here. You have to cycle this, so there's 250 volts, 500 volts, and then there's your continuity function there. And then probes together, and then you get a buzzer and the resistance reading there. Um, when you're in continuity mode, this will not measure voltage, um, but it will alert you that there is voltage present there. Uh, so if you put it in there, 
There you go. I told you that there's a voltage present. Uh, if we go back to a installation test function, uh, again it defaults then to voltage, and there you can see we've now got the voltage value up on the display. Uh, the final function on this is a backlight, and if you just press the short press of the on off button, you get the backlight come up there, and then a longer press, and it turns the unit off. And that's pretty much the functionality of it. So we are set up to our 250 volt installation test mode. We're on open circuit voltage there. Uh, if we hit the go button, and you see we are measuring 267 volts going out there. Uh, we'll switch it to our short circuit current. One milliamp short circuit current. So we've just got a 250 ohm resistor in series with it now, and this should give us a one milliamp load current, uh, which we just get just there 1.02 and 257 kilo ohms we are reading, which is about right. Uh, if we just get rid of that, uh, so we can measure one giga ohm in. 250 volt mode, so we will put one giga ohm on it. And we are 998 mega ohms, which is within its 3% deviation. Uh, plus or minus 3% plus 8 digits is the tolerance on this, so that is all good. Uh, we will just do 50 volts, so we'll go to 500 volt and we will do the same again. This is open circuit voltage. And this time we are 527 volts this time, 529 volts. It's all good. We'll go to short circuit current. 1.17 milliamps there, which is less than the 2 milliamps it specs. Um, just to change this to this time a 500 kilo ohm resistor should give me the 1 milliamp coming out. Uh, we are 1.03 milliamps, 510 kilo ohms, so that's all good. And in 500 volt mode, we can go up to 2 giga ohms. So we flip him over to 2 giga ohms. It's there. And we'll see what we get now. And we've got 1,998 mega ohms. So that is all very good. So I'll have a little test of the resistance mode using the decade box here. It's going to get a little bit noisy again. Um, so the meter, we're reading 1.1 ohms, we're on zero on the box. Uh, the meter does have a zero in function. This button here, and you can see now we're reading zero. Uh, we'll flip him to one ohm, really smack on one ohm. Uh, this can go up to 2000. So if we put on one kilo ohm, uh, we put to 1900. Uh, so at 1900, we've got 1881 showing on the meter. I'm not sure when the uh, uh, continuity buzzer comes in. So that's 50 ohms, it's 40 ohms, 20 ohms, okay. Uh, so it looks like under 10 ohms you'll get the continuity buzzer. Yeah, yeah so buzzer is uh, 
less than 10 ohms and we will read up to 1999 ohms is the capability of the instrument. So there you have it, that's the Sonal MIC5 insulation resistance meter come voltage slash continuity tester. Uh, I shall use it in one of my loadouts to replace my current setup of a voltage indicator and a separate insulation tester to see how I get on with it. Certainly has a few limitations, not got the kind of capabilities that you'll get from an insulation tester so you're not going to be able to carry out condition monitoring tests. I feel that this kind of meter is aimed more at fault investigation really and give you go no go testing. Um, I think it'll be very good for that and certainly cuts down on the amount of instrumentation and leads that I'll be carrying in one of my loadouts. Not quite sure they've got the probes right at this moment in time. I think they need to do a bit of work on that. Slightly narrower at the top here better functionality with the actual holder here so that you can store them in this with them actually fitted to the probe and I, to be honest I would prefer to see more of a lantern style adapter as opposed to these uh, little pins um, that will give you a better connection on there onto a standard 4mm crop clip. Um, I would only need it for one of them, just the uh, one of the leads there, well, I would perhaps crop clip off onto the earth or something like that and then go around with this to insulation test or voltage measure even. Um, but yeah, quite impressed with it really. So it's just a question of how I get on with it. Uh, that'll be it for this video. Thanks very much for watching. And I'll see you again in the next one.